asking that you would seat me down so that you would stand up, oh God. I'm asking, oh God, that you would allow your light to be illuminated here, heaven, God. God, I'm asking that you would allow me to say something that would help somebody along the way, oh God. God, I'm asking that you would allow your light to shine through the scriptures, Heavenly Father, and allow me to walk through this, Heavenly Father, with ease. God, I thank you for your grace, and I thank you for your mercy. God, I thank you for all things, because we know all things that work together for the good. Thank you, Heavenly Father. These and many other blessings, I do pray the most of all, God, I ask that your will be done. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. 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 Now let me figure out this technology up here. Started, I would like to give y'all a praise report. I'd start with that. Uh, been working on something for the last year or so. Uh, I believe you shouldn't take any great undertaking without instruction, without lesson, without being learned in that, for lack of a better term, a profession. And uh, about a week or two ago, uh, all my paperwork went in and I was accepted into a theology school. All right. I know this is going to be nice to do that. Amen. All right. Let us get right into the proceedings this afternoon. The Bible tells us that the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. There's been a coined phrase as of lately that says that I'm taking back what the devil has stolen from me. I know y'all, you all heard that, and you all might have said it, you know, but uh, you have to be cognizant, cognizant meaning aware of his craftiness. He's the master of, he's a master of illusions. Many of us have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray. <laughs> That's the Malcolm X in me, right? But um, we get caught up on the falsehood and the fallacies and the superficialness of this spirit of this age. It's presented to us, let me say it plainly to you. Some of us have been hustled. The thief wants more than your things. Yeah. See, we got caught up on the things that we lost in Hurricane Harvey. That's nothing. 
That's nothing. That's a distraction. The thief wants more than your things. The thief comes to steal your anointing. He comes to kill your appointment. He comes to destroy your association. Most importantly, he comes to destroy your association. Destroying your association detaches you and makes you unaware of your divine weaponry. Those things that God has laid out for you. But thanks be to God, the other part of the other part of John 10 and 10 states that I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Let us look at what Paul has to say about living this abundant life. Paul instructs us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Paul goes in most parenthetically as he has always done with this word, therefore. See, therefore will cause you to look at what it's there for. It's kind of like when somebody said, I said all of that to say this. Right. You know, that's what it is. You know, Paul, he said, I said all of that for you to refer back to the first 11 chapters. Now, I'm not going to stand before you much longer and read all 11 chapters to you, but I would ask that in your spare time that you would go back and read those 11 chapters for yourself. But we're going to go over it briefly, and I'm going to tell you a few things that you need to look for that's going to help you out in your walk in life. Amen. The motivation. Next slide. The motivation for these things. Psalms 37 and 4. He will give us the desires of our heart. Yeah. That's what the Lord says. I'll give you the desires of your heart. But if you run over to John, John 16 and 35 tells us, but in this world, on your path to those desires, you will face tribulation. Yeah. There's not no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's a when is coming. You will face tribulations in this life. Yeah. So Paul is telling the Romans, like, there are things that if you accept this package, if you accept these benefits, if you accept the grace that God is providing for you, there are these mercies that's attached to your salvation. If you read the scripture, he, he, he comes to them and he says, I beseech thee, brethren. Now, brethren is a term that is used for the believer. Now, you got your first part right. You accepted God. That's the first part. But God wants you to go from a base model Christian to a fully loving Christian. Yeah. He, wants you to, yeah. he wants you to go from having one pistol to a whole arsenal. Yeah. Well, so when you stand in front of the devil, you know, when, 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 when Jesus showed up on the shore, there wasn't no question about who he was. Yeah. The man, uh, the man who, who was with legions, he said, what are you doing here? This is not your time. What are you doing here? But he recognized Jesus. Yeah. You look at the seven sons of Stephen. They attempted to use the name of Jesus as some form of spiritual incantation. Yeah. They wanted to speak over this inhabited body of demons. And the demons whooped them because they weren't prepared. Yeah. Because they didn't have him. See, uh, for those who like sciences, I, I kind of geek out on those things a little bit when it comes down to science. Right now, you have 15 pounds of atmospheric pressure pressing on every square inch of your body. 15 pounds. You wonder why you don't collapse. I'll tell you why you don't collapse. Because it's what's on the inside of you that allows you to be able to stand the pressure from the outside. So when you get down to the point, Paul is telling them there are some things that you're going to face in this life. There are some things that you're going to come about, and I just want to give you some things that's going to help you along the way. I want to show you this is the point to where we get to the benefits of association, the mercies of God. Number one, he gives us divine love. Now, I, I, I know you, you, got, you got love, but that divine love, that love that, that, that shields you from all things, that love that gives you that, that emptiness, it feels that emptiness, it feels that void when somebody sitting next to you can't do it. You can look to God for that love. Yeah. Then he also gives you grace. Grace is something that the sinner can't afford. Then he gives you peace with all this hell that's going on in life. I know some of y'all need some peace, right? And then he gives you faith, you number know, four. Yeah. And on top of that, he throws on power. You can stand in his power if you know his word. On top of that, he gives you comfort. 
Number seven, he gives you patience and forbearance. He allows you honor. His, and he lets you rest in his righteousness. Because none of us have any righteousness except for what was imparted in him, in us, by the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Right. Then he gives us a share in his glory. There's 15 times throughout the 11 verses that he mentions justification. Yeah. Justified. You will be justified by my, my name. If you accept this package, if you move from a baseline Christian all the way up to a fully loaded, a fully loaded model, you will get justification. Not only that, you will get reconciliation, sonship, and most important of all of these, I think you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. All right now. What is our indemnification? What do we owe? Psalms tell us that these are the things that we can't pay for. But what is he looking for? <clears throat> what can I give? What can I render for all of these things that you're going to give me? He's saying if you, if you pay him with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Now, I don't know if anybody has a contrite heart, a broken heart, or a broken spirit. Anybody ever been there before in their life? Tell me something. Well, I guess everybody over here is all right. Well, I'll ask this side. Anybody over here ever had a broken spirit? Yeah. A broken heart? Yeah. Or are y'all all right? Yeah. See, see, bro, that's why I like preaching in the prison. You know why? Because <laughs> they know they have done something. <laughs> well, you must have done something because you're in here with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when we come down to the church house, we got the ability to put on the smile and face. We got the ability to stand in the mirror like I asked Nan ever so often. Uh, do I look holy? You know, do I, do I, do I, do I, I got last night off me, Nan. Do I look like I can go to church this morning? I told y'all, man, you can tell y'all I have the devil in me. They got to listen. But what can we pay him? That's a good question. What can we pay? What is my pay? He wants your worship. That's what the scripture is really about. He wants you to be a lifelong worshiper. He wants you to walk and praise him. Now, 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 what I don't mean is he wants you to burst in some type of form of doxology in your workplace. I mean, that's fine if you want to do that. But he wants your platform is what he's asking for. Now, I wish I would have read this scripture a long time ago when I was acting fool on the platform that the Lord gave me. I, 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 thanks be to God, that record is sealed and none of y'all ever see it. <laughs> but right here in the open, thanks be to God that I read this scripture. Now I'm going to feel my mistakes. I'm looking at this and I say, man, he wants my platform. What a perfect time for me to read this. On my platform, Brother Phil, I can go in there and I can serve God in the way that he wants me to serve him with my worship. Yes. Uh, now, what do I mean about my worship? What do I mean? He wants my actions and my reactions. All right. All right. Yeah. So he gives you all of these mercies, all of these things. And, and, and see, the thing about when he gives it to you, the measure in which you show it to someone else, it'll be given to you more and more and more. He don't want you to just have it for yourself. He wants your actions. He wants you to go out into the world and testify for the goodness of his name. Yes, sir. He wants you to serve him in spirit and in truth. He wants your soul, your mind, and your body. Now, I know sometimes we get caught up on and we can say, well, I give him my soul, that's passive. I'm not using it. I ain't never even seen it. But I want your actions. I want your members, as Paul would put it. I want, you've been using your members to serve another master. Now, what Paul is asking you is, if you accept these mercies, if you accept these mercies, I want you to utilize your members to serve this God. I want you to serve this God. Can you do that? Flat Brother Capo walked in and Sister Capo, they sing the song, they asked, where do you stand? 
That's a, that's a valuable question. I like, I always have liked that song. That's a valuable question. Who's on the Lord's side? That's what Paul is asking so politely. Look, I want you to make a decision right here and there. Where do you stand? You, 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 you've been using yourself for other things. Why you can't use yourself for the Lord who gave you the energy to do the things that you've been doing anyway? Well, see, it's not the fact that there's going to be some things that you can't do no more. You're looking at it the wrong way. You need to look at it for the fact that there's going to be many things that you're able to do. There's things that I couldn't stand for because I, I didn't have those mercies in place. Well, they were there, but I hadn't acknowledged them. I didn't know what to do when I got to these things. So I used it as my own strength. When I, when I got here this morning, I was a little bit worried. I'm going to tell you all the truth. I was a little bit worried. You know why? Because I didn't feel my normal jitters. I'm like, oh, Lord. Pastor told me that if I don't feel those jitters, something is wrong. Until I stood right at the steps. <laughs> when I stood right at the steps, I said, oh, it's going to be all right now. So Paul said, Paul prayed a prayer. He asked God, can you remove this thorn from my side? Yeah. Now, Paul didn't ask anything when he said I was shipwrecked, set adrift. Paul wasn't worried about that. When he said I was in perils of brethren, perils of my own design, he wasn't worried about that. He said, I did all of these things for the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. And he asked God, if you can remove this thorn in my side, I can serve you better. Yeah. That's the only reason he wanted that thorn removed out of his side, yeah. so he could serve God better. And I said, God, if you can remove the jitters, I can serve you better. But thank God that the Holy Spirit can step in when I am weak. Right, yeah. Amen. So we go on and, and, and we, we look at Paul in 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. And he said, I beat my body into submission. Now, by no means do I want you to think that I'm telling you this as if it was something easy to do. As if I'm telling you to detach from this master and serve this master. Serve him in the times where you don't want the world on the seat. Serve him in them times where you are by yourself. Serve him in them times where you have the power over people. When you can either help or hurt them. Yes. Serve God then yes, when you have that power. I, I heard what you read this morning, Brother Shelton, about a man being in a certain position. That shows the character of a man. When you stand in a certain position over someone, are you serving God yes. with your actions? Yes. Are you serving God? Are you utilizing your platform for God's people? That is a good question. That's a good question, but I know this thing is riddled with doxologies and principles from 11, from 1 all the way down to 11 to the time Paul gets to death for. But when it comes to living, you have to get your principles straight. See, your, your orthopraxy has to be a result of your orthodoxy. Your ethical behavior stems from your dogma. Your sense of duty streams from your doctrine. If you don't have your doctrine straight, if you don't have that base level, that baseline straight, then I can't expect ethical behavior from a person. And, I, and, and the, the, the thing about it is, he doesn't want you to be perfect. He wants you to do what the Bible tells you to do when you fall and stumble. Yes. See, the Bible says he'll renew your strength. Those that wait upon the Lord, he will renew your strength. But now look at that word wait. Uh -huh. That word wait. That word wait, it doesn't mean sitting by and passing. Yeah. No, that word wait is more of those that wait upon the Lord. Those that serve God's people. Hence the fact of the renewing of your strength. Because had you not exalted your strength, what would you need to be renewed for? Yes, sir. So when it comes down to living, you got to get your principles straight. Am I doing all right in time, Jenny? All right. <laughs> when you believe, what you believe designs your behavior. The basis of right behavior is understanding right doctrine. In the beginning, chapter 1, Paul sets the stage by addressing them with their principles. See, Saul was a very dangerous man. Not only was he dangerous because he chopped his head off, but he was quite intellectual. 
See, now that's a dangerous person that you're dealing with right there. A person that can meet you on your level of intellect and kill you at the same time. <laughs> and Paul is talking to the Romans because he's a Roman citizen. See, see, Paul's past sins allowed him to travel inside of different arenas, different courts that maybe if he wasn't a citizen, he wouldn't be getting ready to get there. Yeah. Paul was on his way to jail. He said, take me to jail. I mean, well, I've been trying to get to Rome all this time. Y'all give me a free ride. Yeah. So when we look at these principles, Paul meeting with these principles, and he says this to him. The principles of circumcision. What does it mean for a man to be circumcised about if he hadn't circumscribed his heart. See, the mark of the true Jew, that's good in its place. That's good for you to have the identification of a Christian. But if your actions and your reactions doesn't say that I am Christ-like, if you doesn't see the illumination of Christ in you, I heard it when you said it in your prayer also earlier, uh, that we will be the first and maybe even the last Jesus and Bible that some people will see. Yeah. See, Paul is talking to Christians, like I said earlier, because he said, brethren, now I, I, I know they, nobody here has a problem. I understand that. Uh, I'm talking about other churches where they ain't no those Christians act like <laughs> uh, Don't y'all hold me in I'm talking about other people. So I want y'all to go out and tell them that you got to get your doctorate straight. Now, you ain't going to do everything perfect. But John 13 and 17 says, if you know these things, blessed are you that do it. Yeah. Amen. Yes, See, as I read further, and I like to allow the Bible to prove the Bible. I like to cross-examine the scriptures with the scriptures. Uh, I politely corrected someone when they told me there's no need to worry about the Old Testament. On the country, yeah, on the country, Christ came to fulfill those scriptures. Yeah, right now. So if He came to fulfill those scriptures, that means that we still need to read those scriptures. So I read out there, and I said, "Man, I, I gotta find a loophole." I know y'all wouldn't say this, but I said it. I gotta find a loophole to this contract of sacrifice. It has to be something that I have not read that would say. I'm not good enough for a sacrifice for these things. Yeah. Because in Deuteronomy 25 and 21 and Leviticus 22 and 20, it talks about the animal needs to be without blemish or without defect. So I don't know, y'all might be perfect, but I know me. I know the things that y'all don't know about me. And, and I, you, you know the things, Miss Kathleen, that you know about you that I don't know. <laughs> I don't deal with Miss Kathleen and that brother Capo's in the back. She don't behave right. <laughs> the things that she say to me is just outlandish. She said in the Lord's house. She told me this morning you got on all black to thank God <laughs> that she got a white smile. <laughs> and that the light in the hallway is on. <laughs> but Lord, I wouldn't be able to see <laughs> Because they had already told me, that I know you're black, but Lord, do you have to be just so black? <laughs> what can I do about it? What are the Christians I'm talking about? I am having too much fun. Let's get on back to the world. So I asked the Bible, I asked God to show me if this is what it says in the New Testament, and this is what it says in the Old Testament. And I need an in-between, God, because you know me, I'm looking, I can read contracts. And if, it, if it's something, like I told someone else, if it's not contractual, then it don't matter. If it's not in there, then it don't matter. If there's a loophole, somebody will attempt to take it. You better believe that. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his word. And we got them slick devils that are trying to get out of things that they're bound to. See, Jude 24 and 25 says, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. So I'm able to be a good sacrifice. You're able to be a good sacrifice. And why is that? Because, because Christ died that you can be presented faultless to God. 
Let me give you one more reason why, 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 why you should present yourself. Why you should offer yourself. Why else should I give myself? The first Corinthians 6 and 20 says, Therefore, honor God with your body. Why should I honor God with my body? Because you have been bought with the price. You've been bought with the price of the cross. Yes. And, 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 I, and I want to tell you, if you got one more question, I'm glad you asked me. What is the price? They led him from hall to hall. They whipped him all night long. They watched him up a hill. Y'all don't know that song. I don't know if y'all know that song. They, they gave him a crown of thorns. They nailed him to the cross. And on the night hour, he cried out, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabethani. Did he die for you? Yeah. And he died for me. Yeah. So that I'm able, on my platform, on my daily walk in life, I can be a living and breathing testament to the goodness of God. But on the third day, he didn't leave it right there just with death. On the third day, he said, I got to get back up because I got to go. I got to go up top. Because I still got to work for him. I got to intercede for the boy. That's what he said. See, see, if no one knows about being put on, uh, uh, being offered the, the, the choice of get down or lay down, it's Paul. See, Paul, uh, Ananias was sent to go find Paul because Paul was set on straight street. Pun intended. That's what the Bible says. Go down and find my boy Paul because he was set on straight street. Go down there and find Martin because he was set on straight street. He couldn't see right before, so I had to take his vision and change his vision. I had to change the things that he thought he saw. I had to change the things that he thought he knew. Yeah. But now I set the boy out on straight street. So go on and see him and bring him on because I got something that I need him to do. Yes, sir. Is that all right? Yeah. My timekeeper ain't even looking up. <laughs> he said, I told you you let 15 minutes, 10 minutes go. <laughs> well, that's all I got for y'all today. But I want to tell y'all that God loves you. And I love you too. And I want to tell you that, that any platform that you stand on today, I want you to praise God. We sing another song over here. He used to start as one of our classics, one of our favorites. I'm a drunk we talk about how much we love to praise his name. Right? That's what we talk about in our one hour classes that we love to sing on the end of this and stuff. I love to praise his name. Well, I'm telling you that you can go out tomorrow, Monday. They say most people catch a heart attack on Monday or Sunday night because they got to deal with the pressures they're going to deal with on Monday morning. That is statistically proven. But today I just gave you something that you can put in your office. And I hope you wrote it down and not get with Jalen here to email it to you. But you need these mercies. You need to be able to walk and talk Psalms 23. And when you talk about surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I was there in the house of the Lord. And how long I'm going to do, I'm going to do it there. Right because of his mercy, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to pray. I don't know if y'all love to praise him. I can walk and talk at night because I love to praise him. Because I'm standing to sing with you.
His first call is for you, y'all for Christ, to be my brother, my sister. Second call is those that desire prayer. If you're here today, you desire your prayer, I want you to come up. Amen. Teach us 
kind of let go of the things that, that are causing us so much pain and give it to you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we have a young man who's getting ready to go to school. He's getting ready to face some unknown. But Father, we know that you go with us into the unknown. And what's unknown to us is known to you. And Father, we thank you for that right now. For being able to see where we're going. Even before we get there. So Father, give him that, ch give, give, give him that confidence. That you're walking with him every step of the way. And when he needs you, you adjust the prayer away. Bless his family right now. In the name of Jesus, help them to continue to be the support system that he's going to need. But not only his family, Father, bless his church family. That when he calls, we answer. And that whatever he needs, Father, we're able to give. We pray for that, Father, right now. In the name of Jesus. And now, Father, we ask that you bless these little stars. Bless our leader, Father, who's not here right now. Bless his family. In the name of Jesus. Bless this ministry staff. Bless our church leaders. Father, bless this church to celebrate the victories that we have and strive, continuing, moving forward together for new victories that will soon be ours. Then, Father, let's be selfish. Bless every individual in this place. Give them the desires of their heart. In the name of Jesus, we thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the chains that are getting ready to be broken. In the name of Jesus, we thank you in advance for the tears that you're getting ready to wipe from from our eyes. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the healing that is on the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand. Amen. If you get a chance, shake the preacher's hand. Also, our college student who's getting ready to leave, shake our young young man's hand, give his family a hug, let him, let him know that we support him, we support him, and if he needs anything, whatever he needs, give Reverend Scott a thumb until he call him ready. <laughs> we call him, we call him, we call him, I just we call him. <laughs> thank you, thank you all again for the preaching. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you again. For what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt, and the sweet spirit that's in this place. Help us to leave here with that same sweet spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Go in the knowledge and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Be honor and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. God, God's people say it. Amen.